Hello guys. Uh, so we're going to keep talking about parabolas and circumparabolas. Uh, what is a circumparabola to a triangle, right? A circumparabola to a triangle is a parabola that passes through the three vertices. You know, a parabola has four parameters. So if you just say, okay, it needs to pass through three vertices, there's another free parameter that you need to specify. Now, one way to construct the entire set of circumparabolas to a particular triangle is to actually draw its Steiner ellipse. Here's the Steiner ellipse. This is the circum ellipse centered on the body center of a certain triangle. So there's a unique circum ellipse centered on the body center of a given triangle. And you draw any old tangent to that Steiner and you compute its isotomic image. So the isotomic image of a tangent to the Steiner is a circumparabola. So if I vary that tangent, I'm going to get a different circumparabola, as you can see here. So it suffices for you to use of this trick to actually enumerate or traverse the entire family of circumparabolas of a given um, triangle. Draw its Steiner and then sweep all the tangents and compute the isotomic, not the isogonal, the isotomic image of those tangents. Okay, now this is not the main topic here. The main topic is the following. I want to marry this as I usually do with Poncelet. So the family that is uh, directly connected to the Steiner ellipse is the so-called homothetic family of triangles, Poncelet homothetic. So this is a family of triangles interscribed between two concentric axis aligned homothetic ellipses. The inner ones is sometimes uh, called the caustic. And this is actually the Steiner in ellipse of this triangle. So I have a Poncelet family that I can animate, which is interscribed between the Steiner ellipse, or if some, sometimes it's called the Steiner circum ellipse, and the Steiner in ellipse of this, tri this family of triangles. And this pair remains uh, stationary. And uh, also stationary is this black dot, which is the stationary barycenter, the centroid of this family of triangles. And this family of triangles conserves areas, uh, conserves the sum of side length squared, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so now I actually want to show what the isotomic of this green line looks like, the circumparabola, that is the isotomic image of this green line, with respect to this family. <coughs> let's go ahead and draw that. So for a particular triangle, let's see if I can do this without blowing up Mathematica. It's going to blow up at positions when uh, the circumparabola goes through infinity. So you can see here that Mathematica is, is flashing when that happens. But let's ignore that. Now I want you to notice a very curious phenomenon. I don't think this is known. Uh, all these circumparabolas are tangent to the reflection of this tangent with respect to the centroid of the system. So if I jog my Poncelet, the family of circumparabolas corresponding to that green line, you know, specifically that they are the isotomic images of that green line. And by the way, I'm showing the focus of the circumparabola, its vertex and its directrix, right? Uh, all these circumparabolas happen to be tangent mysteriously to this uh, opposite line or this reflected image of the green line with respect to the center of the system. So this is property number one. Let's go ahead and now light up the locus of F over a restricted range of triangles in this family. So let's do this, and this sometimes can. OK, so this actually worked. Yeah, th these calculations are still a bit um, unstable because these triangles sometimes cause the circumparabola to go to infinity, and then Mathematica doesn't like that. But you can see here that the locus of the focus is not straight. It's not a conic. And in fact, Bernard Gibert, I, I showed him these results. He told me that this is a nine degree curve. He said very complicated and uh, not even amenable to a computer algebra manipulation. Very long and, and big expression. So this is a degree nine uh, plane curve, locus of the focus. I can also show the locus of the vertex. Locus of the vertex is this uh, pink line it is, it's actually not exactly tangent to the reflection of the green. The, this blue thing is this is just a, an optical illusion. If I actually change, for example, uh, if I change my tangent, 
you'll see that uh, this thing, as far as I know, is not tangent. Maybe it is. It looks tangent here, right? Let's actually change the aspect ratio of my Poncelet family. So actually, it looks like it is. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. So the locus of the vertex seems to be, and maybe this is obvious, but it seems to be tangent to the reflection of the green line about the center as well. And I can also show the locus of the directrix is this other curve, also probably at least nine, uh, degree 9. Okay, so these are the properties to the isotomic image of a tangent to the Steiner for the homotatic family. Things that I haven't explored here yet, uh, one of them is what is the locus of the focus? Um, what is the locus of F as I change uh, the tangent? So if I do this, what's happening to that focus? You can visually see here that it's actually doing an interesting curve, and we don't know what this is, if this is simple curve, if it's you know, degree 2 or higher, but this hasn't been studied yet. Another thing that hasn't been studied is what is the envelope of the directrix either over a motion of this tangent or jogging the actual uh, Poncelet family. What is this envelope? Is it an interesting curve or not? So this has to be explored. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about isogonal images of tangents to the circumcircle, not to the Steiner ellipse. See you in the next video.